I'm Trent Jackson, a West Pasco campus elder. We've been fostering for six years. Just about. Yep. I'm Cassie Jackson. What I'm sharing is a little bit different. I actually, um, a couple of years ago, someone really close to me shared with me that she wanted to be in a same sex relationship. And just how I handled that right off the bat was not in a Christ like, God honoring way. And it took a long time to rebuild our relationship. And so just kind of wanted to share my experience mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. I'm Angela Gonzalez. This is my husband. Um, and uh, I'm an educator in the Kenwick School District, uh, assistant principal there. I'm Christian Gonzalez, so I'm the uh, next gen director at our West Pasco campus. Uh, before that, I was a teacher, dual language teacher, uh, about five and a half years. So, first generation Mexican American, so I've got a lot of cool stories and just, uh, yeah, just to see where the Lord has brought me from here. So, I'm kind of a first and a half generation Mexican because my dad was born in Mexico, but my mom was born here. And so it's really hard being a Mexican American. Why am I so passionate about finding my place here? Why am I so um, sometimes even insecure mm -hmm. about my place? It's something that I, I struggle with internally to try and constantly prove that I belong or that I am worth my position something that I experience because of of being a minority. It's constantly trying to prove that I'm like you and I deserve this master's degree or I, I deserve to be in this chair, in this office. I was a lot younger. I was probably like seven or eight. The clinic that I, I would go to just for my annual checkups and all that stuff, they were raffling off a PlayStation. Like, I'm like, whoa, that's cool. So I told my mom, hey, mom, let's get into the raffle, that kind of thing. And she didn't know any, any English. And I don't know why I didn't translate for her because that's that's typically what you do. It's like, you know, you serve as, you're you're a kid, first of all, but then at, at home, you're also a translator. Like, you know, you, you that's just what you do. And I just remember my mom going up to the front office and asking, hey, like, how do I enter into this, this, uh, this raffle? And she, with her trying to, figure out how to say it in English and trying to figure out, hey, can, is there someone that speaks Spanish? And I just remember overhearing um, these, these uh, Caucasian ladies saying like, oh, like we shouldn't do that for those illegals, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was, that that situation um, marked me. And I think that's why I have that internal struggle because it's like, I need to show those ladies that this is who we are. This is what we can become. This, this, is, this is how far we can go. Even that has affected the way I see immigration. Uh, the way I see the value of immigrants coming to, to the United States and, and, and they're there to have a better life. They're there to contribute to society. And I'm so sorry that you had to hear that. Like yeah. that breaks my heart because when this person really close to me had shared a couple years ago that she wanted to be in a same sex relationship, I said things to her that I can never take back. Like I told yeah. myself I wouldn't be emotional in this video, but I saw her as that the issue rather than like a person who has feelings and even the struggle that she was going through as she went through her divorce and everything it was like man if she was going to get a divorce and she was in a relationship with another man like how much easier would that be but i just kept seeing her issue and i said things that i can't take back and it's been so good to be able to rebuild that relationship with her but it's taken time and my heart is, and, and I, don't, I hate saying like when I look at her now, I want her to, I want to see her like God sees her, but like that is the easiest way to explain mm -hmm. it. Like, and I think that's not just for those that maybe are, you know, in the same sex relationship, but it's, you know, unwed moms mm -hmm. or homeless or like we put these people into these groups or these categories and we don't see them as a person with feelings and we see them about as their situation is rather than a person. What made you realize? What was the trigger for you to realize that I shouldn't have done that? Was it a process or was um, it your faith? Yeah, I got more involved with um, Preston Sprinkle and yeah. read his books and have gone to a couple of his conferences. Um, and he has a book called um, A People to Be Loved, Why Homosexuality Isn't Just an Issue. Uh, my name is Zenon Thornton and kind of my my background is I uh, was born into a multiracial family, uh, both small town life, uh, big city life. Uh, so 
I've been around people of all nationalities and, and colors. And so I think I, I bring a unique perspective having kind of lived it both from a racial perspective and a small town to large city environment. As an interracial couple, we've had some unique uh, circumstances and, and situations. And so we can speak to a little bit of that. Part of that experience played itself out just in, you know, growing up as a, as a kid and then how people kind of react to you in different mm-hmm. situations. And, uh, you know, I can remember some, some funny things in school, like, you know, as a, uh, third grader, fourth grader, fifth grader, where, you know, kids want to hide pens and pencils in your, you know, in your hair <laughs> to even just wanting to, you know, touch your skin and that, those kind of things. And it's, you know, it's, it's just really weird. Um, it's weird. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's weird. Mm-hmm. Can I touch your skin? Can I hide something in your hair? Uh, mm-hmm. Because it's different. And um, so it does make you ask those questions, like being a biracial kid, you know, if I was with my mom, who I don't necessarily look like, yeah. it was just kind of the the looks of, oh, well, who is that? Well, that's my mom, you know, yeah. and, and and like that's your mom, you know. And then well, the- and I think you've kind of experienced that sometimes with our kids, right? Like when you would be with the girls, you could tell people were kind of trying to tell, are they with you? Do they belong to you? Mm-hmm. That kind of that's thing. That's definitely the flip side of that yeah. is, you know, then having kids of our own yeah. that are various hues of, of the rainbow. Um, kind of that, that, that the flip side of that. Yeah. Like, is that, that your kid? Like, why are you hugging that small <laughs> child? A little bit of a wall goes up as you enter those environments because yeah. you don't want to, you want to protect yourself from that hurt. You want to protect your kids from that. And so yeah. a lot of times you, we, I, I would live out of a uh, protective wall not wanting yeah. to um, expose myself to that own hurt or just, you know, be a judgment or be looked at differently. Everybody mm-hmm. wants to fit into the environment mm-hmm. in which they're in. And and so those were some of the challenges to me was just how do, how do you fit in? How do you fit in? Yeah. I know for me that was whether it was middle school, high school, who, who was I trying to figure out mm-hmm. my identity? And it wasn't necessarily about race, but it was trying to figure out who I was. Mm-hmm. And I think for me later on in, in, in life, as I moved even into to college in different environments where it was kind of the, it was the reverse, oh. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> reverse racism or what, what have you in that friends that I knew, classmates that I knew from other environments, more urban environments would um, expect me to behave a certain way based mm. on the color of my skin that wasn't mm. who I was. And so I, I wrestled with fitting in from that perspective. Like, this is what they're expecting me to mm. act like, talk like. Yeah. Um, and it just, it wasn't who I was. So I had to kind of figure out, okay, who am I? How am I going to rep- represent myself to even mm. people that do look like me, but come from a different area of the country or yeah. uh, were raised in an urban environment. And so it's, it's, really, uh, it's really interesting to um to understand that and as i've grown you know i just uh you know try to treat people the way i would want to be treated one thing that i learned with fostering which i wasn't anticipating was the relationship with the bio parents Mm -hmm. and started off um we got licensed like six years ago and almost instantly got a first placement and didn't really try for a relationship with the parents but as we got back into fostering again, like in 2018, we like had a better relationship with Jesus and saw that it was an opportunity. And I came to find out that these bio parents, I'm just as messy, you know? Like wow. even though their struggles are more out there, and they can impact more than maybe my struggles. Um, I'm not any better, and we still all have that broken image of God, you know? And it's just, that was super eye-opening to me. Like, I just, it hit me like, one of the first kids we had after getting back into foster care, his mom was young mom, first kid, really struggle with anxiety and that's like me to a t it can be really easy to look negatively on people that hurt you know kids that you care for and that you love Mm -hmm. and to not afford them that dignity um that they're represented that they're representatives of god by bearing his image but no matter what Mm -hmm. they've done no matter what we've done we still are image bearers of god and are supposed to treat each other like that Mm -hmm. i feel like i've been really fortunate coming from a family that was very accepting, open. I just feel like I've 
had a lot of people in my life pour into that, coaches, teachers. And I mean, even for us, like I feel like um, our church in Seattle, we went to CBF. It was a multicultural church. It was beautiful. I, I just felt feel like we were celebrated. And I mean, it was, it was cool because there was people from every walk of life. And, and when you walked through that door, you felt welcomed mm -hmm. and that you were home. I mean, from where there were socioeconomic differences and age differences, but it was, I felt celebrated, right? I feel like even that as we're going through this Imago Day, like we're celebrating other people because they're made in God's image. And it's just a beautiful thing. So I do feel like in a lot of ways, we've been very fortunate to to be able to have that. Right? I don't know and if then, you guys saw it on yeah. Bessel's Instagram. Yeah. Oh, you were talking yeah. about that. I did. Oh, yeah, because yeah. you yeah. told so everybody. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. It's in Made to Worship, Hechos para Adorar. Right, right. I was like, this is our church. Yeah. This is our you even reposted it to your story. And just <laughs> like, come check this place out. You went to small group, you're like, guys. <laughs> yes, did I, you did. Check it out? I did. <laughs> exactly. Like, how do we help people in our church even come alongside um, those people and still see them yeah. as being um, image bearers and talking about it. I think if we yes. don't talk about it, like if I don't I'm share really what what I've experienced and what I've gone through and how I didn't handle it right, you know, and yeah. how I would wish I could have handled it differently, then we're all just walking around <laughs> with yeah. our own, you know, yeah. struggles and it's yeah. transparent. You know. yeah. Yes, that's huge. You're yeah. separating the situation mm -hmm. from the person and loving that person. I think at least for me with that topic and with bio parents my goodness that's so hard separating the situation from the person yeah, yeah. and loving you know this mm -hmm. image of god yeah oh my gosh yeah there's this perception that if somebody doesn't agree with me and my lifestyle that they hate me mm -hmm. and unfortunately that's often supported by people within the church yeah because, yeah. yeah i mean Christians are guilty mm -hmm. of speaking hatred to people because they're different from yeah. how they see things and how yeah. they think they should be, yeah. which right. I mean, whether or not you can back it up biblically or not, like the bottom mm -hmm. line is this is somebody who God loves mm -hmm. and I should love, yep. like no matter where they come Amen. from. Yep. Meeting them where they're at without judging them, which it's hard when you take care of their kids and you see like mm -hmm. the impacts of their choices. But mm -hmm. when you meet them where they're at and you love them it speaks so much mm -hmm. in that super vulnerable time right. yes yeah and not everything has to be evangelism but at the yeah. same time when you do get to that point with somebody how much more is it going to speak to them if it's this person mm -hmm. that's been treating them with love and respect yes. the entire time that you've known them yes yeah, yeah. And now they're sharing the reason why mm -hmm. yeah it, it, it's as yeah. if you already you already built that relational bridge right. with the them bridge, yeah. 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 yeah relational bridge with them and now it's like You've shown them the gospel through through acts, through through service, mm -hmm. through love, and now you get to hopefully through work. Physical appearance and, mm -hmm. and background and, and all of those things and labels um, become barriers. Christ came to remove those barriers, yeah. right? He reached through those. He entered into, into that mm -hmm. environment for us to remove those barriers so that we could have a relationship with, with God the Father. Yeah. I mean, and so... So who are we to put mm. barriers in front of people, um, certainly as it relates to Jesus, but also as it just relates to our, our humanity. And, uh, you know, it, it's easy to uh, have prejudice or ill will against, a, you know, a label. Yeah. You know, it's harder to have it for another human that's made in the image mm. of God. And so as we ascribe the value that God has placed on each one of us to that person sitting across the room or, or next door or whatever, then you're right, it becomes a responsibility on our part to to honor that person as if, you know, they were they were Jesus, you know, sitting next to us. And, and um, so I think that's really what it's about. Mm -hmm.